and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly, so if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. Now today's Phasmid Files video contains an awesome species and a nice easy one if you want to get into the Phasmid hobby. And that is the Phenopharos Kaoyaensis. So, the animal you see in front of you here is the Phenopharos Kaoyaensis. Now, I've struggled to find a tall enough plant to feature this one on, so please bear with me on the filming of this particular insect. But we can start off by saying, straight off, the handling of these guys, or gal should I say, which I'll explain in a moment, is no problem at all. Now the common name for these is the giant budwing stick insect. You get the giant part right, but here are the little bud wings. Now, she doesn't really like me touching her to open these, but I'll see if I can show you. There we have it. Those little wings there are why she's called the giant budwing stick insect. Now, they will often stick to these beigey, browny colours. It's only the wings that you just saw that come out red. They will flap these if they feel a predator is around to say, stay away, I'm dangerous or I'm scary. Red being the known colour for danger in the animal kingdom. Whether it actually works or not, I'm not entirely sure. Another good point about these is these eyes, almost marble effect eyes on these phasmids. It's truly fascinating. But we need to get more to the point on how to keep these and some more information other than what you can just see with your very eyes. The PSG number, or Phasmid Study Group number, is 215. Now the interesting thing about these is they were actually collected by, and I'll probably say this wrong, Ingo Fritschi. I really can't say that. But that was it back in 1997. However, the species was not actually described until the year 2000 by Zompro. Now I forgot to mention when going back to these wings, obviously being little bud wings that are used to startle predators, they can't be used to fly or even glide. Imagine an elephant having wings the size of a pigeon. <laughs> Similar thing here, they just wouldn't have enough power to get them off the ground. Being a species that can reach 13 centimetres, in my opinion will put them in the bracket between medium and large phasmid. 13 centimetres is pretty big to some, but if you see what else awaits in the realm, you would think these weren't very big at all. Now you will only find females of these in the hobby, at least at the moment anyway, and that is because they are purely parthenogenic. Although it is believed by some that there are plenty of males out in the wild that just weren't collected. You'll often find with parthenogenic species that males are not really that easy to come by. However, I imagine that if we managed to get males in the hobby, they would be same coloration, slightly slimmer, and perhaps different wing shape. But that's just a complete guess off my own back. Now, if you're looking to feed these phasmids, don't use the plant I'm using here. You'd want to feed them bramble, raspberry, hawthorn, hypericum, rose, or oak. At least they're the food plants I know that these will take to. Personally, I tend to stick to bramble, raspberry and a bit of oak. Now these are a Southeast Asian species, originating in Thailand, although there is possible chances of these being elsewhere. That's the only known location I know of for this species. Now Thai species normally require high humidity, and although sources online may indicate that you should keep these humid at all times, I actually find that higher humidity among these giant budwings causes higher fatality. I tend to keep mine fairly dry, and they do absolutely fine. In personal keeping experience, I've actually found the higher humidity caused more deaths among young nymphs than it did having the dry spells. Now one thing a lot of new keepers don't realise is a lot of phasmids actually get their main water source from the fresh leaves of bramble. 
So providing you have fresh green bramble, especially the darker, older green bramble, which they love, they're going to always have a water source. I tend to give them a fine mist every week or so, even though most research indicates you should do it every other day. As I said, in personal experience, I have raised these better in drier periods. And again, I never spray the phasmid itself, just the leaves. Or if I have a substrate, I will spray the substrate. Now to get a small nymph to an adult like this takes around about five to six months. Ova is purely dropped by this species, unlike some that bury them. Let's have a look at her abdomen and see the difference between the burying species. There. Look at the end of her abdomen in comparison to some of the other species that we've looked at. You'll notice that others had a spike. This is normally used for digging into substrate to lay their ova. The giant budwings don't have this long ovipositor. They simply open the abdomen and drop the ova directly onto the floor, even from high up surfaces. It doesn't damage them, of course. The ova are absolutely fine. And you will often find they take four to six months to hatch. And again, like the other ones I've shown you, they have a high success rate. Have you seen my nymph's explosion video? If not, type it in and check it out after this, and you'll see how many I managed to get from just a few adults of this species before. Now there is one super cool thing I like about these phasmids. You see how long their legs are compared to my finger. I would class them as a long-legged thin phasmid, right? Normally, long-legged phasmids do often drop legs. This is a defense mechanism used by phasmids, kind of how a gecko will with its tail. A phasmid can drop a leg to escape a predator and they'd grow it back next molt. Adult phasmids, however, do not molt anymore, meaning they cannot regrow their limbs. So if one loses a leg as an adult, it's never going to get it back. But to the point, right? Why do I like these stick insects with long legs more than some others? They're not prone to dropping. They are one of the only long-legged phasmids that I have kept that just don't drop legs easily. Even in molting, I have found that these phasmids are normally quite successful. So you probably want to know how to house these gals, right? Well, for the fact that they reach 13 centimetres, you need to three times that for the height of the enclosure. So I wouldn't have an enclosure any less than 39 centimetres tall for successful molts with this phasmid species. That doesn't mean you need it to be 39 centimetres. It means it as a minimum. So getting a 40, 45 or even 50 centimetre tall tank or bigger would only be better for this species. Now most South Asian species I seem to find do better in tanks like an Exoterra. However, I have raised budwings in net cages, in Exoterras and in half acrylic and half net tanks. I find that most nymphs make it to adulthood pretty easily. Meaning I am going to give these guys a difficulty rating of 2 out of 10. My only reason for choosing 2 is because they are on the slightly larger side, the mid to large size phasmid. It means getting a more expensive enclosure. Meaning you have to spend more as a keeper and maintain a larger enclosure. But that's it. That's the only reason I'm not making these guys simply a 1 out of 10. I just want to get another shot at those eyes. That's one of my favourite things about these. You'd think it would be the red wings, right? But no. For me, it's those eyes. Very unique looking. And as we've shown in other phasmids, they keep their antennae pretty close together. Look how long they are. Even longer than their legs. It's still going. Wow. For body texture, I would say they're warty. They don't really have spikes like many other phasmids do. Instead, they have this sort of warty texture along their back. I say that purely for look, not the fact they are actually warts. And don't worry, you won't catch them. Now I think it's going to be time we come to an end of this video. 
I'm sorry I couldn't show you the enclosure for this girl that I actually keep, but the reason being is she is a rogue. I sold this culture on after enjoying them for three generations, but I missed a single egg, and that egg hatched. And I couldn't bear to freeze her off or feed her to the teas, just because she was one final survivor after selling my colony. So I kept her, and I thought, you know what, we'll leave her to cohabitat. If she survives, she survives. And she did, all the way to maturity. The problem I have now, of course, because she's parthenogenic. She's laid lots of over, so I'm going to have even more offspring. But to be honest, she's getting old now, which means a chunk of her eggs might be due to hatch within the next couple of months. So I may well pass those eggs on, or if they turn into nymphs, I will certainly pass the nymphs on to maybe another YouTuber. So what I want you two guys to do is comment me below. Let me know what you think of the Phenopharos kaoyaensis. Is this a species you want to own? Do you like this one more than the previous phasmids we have shown? Or do you think that she is boring? Don't forget, of course, she has those awesome red wings we saw earlier. That's the only time she's been willing to bring them out for me today. I would have loved to get you some better shots of those wings. They actually shake them about and it makes a rustling noise. Something I was hoping to catch on camera today. But you'll just have to take my word for it. Or buy yourself some bud wings and see if they do that for you. So if you want to see what else dwells within the realm, make sure to pop back weekly for multiple videos. If you think the information on this video might help out another keeper, or get someone interested in keeping phasmids, please share it across social media. I also keep a host of many other things if you're new here. Mantis, tarantulas, scorpions, beetles and more. So if stick insects aren't your thing, still stick around and check out my other content. I think it's time. I put this big girl back in her home. So what I want to say is thanks for watching everyone. And I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye from me and goodbye from her. Take care guys. Bye bye.